and thank you for joining me for the Vampire Talk Show. I'm your host, Valane. Val to my friends. My roommate discovered my coffin under the concrete floor of the basement in her new house and woke me up from a hundred year nap. Now I'm reconnecting with old friends, making new ones, and of course, making a podcast. We have a wonderful show for you tonight, but first, I need to celebrate something. Y'all, it is Pride Month. And yes, uh, I am a pansexual vampire, which isn't too weird, actually. Most vampires are pansexual. Uh, just read the Anne Rice series, you'll see what I mean. Um, and uh, I have been to Pride celebrations this month for the first time, because I've been napping, and my goodness, I've never seen so many queers in one place so happy and I loved every second of it. You even see children running around with their pride flags, like superheroes, like capes around their necks. And it was just a wonderful and beautiful thing. And it made me think of how things were before in the 1920s, where we had to go into speakeasies that weren't the straight speakeasies, but the queer speakeasies. And, you know, uh, we got raided by police all the time. Not just because we had, you know, <laughs> booze that we weren't supposed to have, but because we were also queer. Now, I've done my research, and I was wondering about this Pride Month. And first of all, I was wondering about Pride Month because, well, it is very hot this time of year. And drag queens are notoriously in so many layers. And I said to myself, self, why would drag queens want to perform in such heat and, and, and sweat their makeup off and, and everything else? Why is Pride in June? Well, I did my research and I read about the Stonewall Riots. And the Stonewall Riots, the anniversary, 55 years, is actually today when this episode releases on Friday, uh, June 28th. And the riots lasted for a couple of days, and it was uh, a bunch of queer folks coming together, finally fed up with being marginalized, and then a trans woman of color, Marsha P. Johnson, threw a brick. And you know what? Sometimes that's what you gotta do. And I have to remind myself of that occasionally. Because it is, you know, taking the high road and, and you know, turning the other cheek and you know, keeping your head down and focused and everything else is good for a little while, but sometimes, sometimes you just need to throw a fucking brick. Just keep that in mind for yourselves and happy Pride Month to all of my queer friends and all of my allies and all of my trans people and everything else. Uh, I love you all. And if I keep talking, I'll start crying. Anyway, let's get on with the show, shall we? So, my guest tonight is an interesting entity. A little background for those who may not be in the know. In theaters, when there is no show and the theater is closed, uh, there is a light usually put out on the stage. It's usually a naked light bulb. Uh, and, you know, if you're fancy, it's one of those Edison light bulbs. Um, but it's uh, for safety, but it's also known as the ghost light. And it's the light to keep the ghost company and that sort of thing. Um, and I am thrilled to have the ghost of a ghost light here on the show, in the studio. Please welcome my guest, Dawn, the ghost light ghost. Hello, it's wonderful to be here. Thank you for having me. <laughs> I'm so glad you're here. Um, well, in a sense, I know you're incorporeal and it doesn't really take much for you to travel, but I do appreciate the, the effort. Um, so you are a spirit of ghost light. Um, is there a particular theater or are you just like kind of the amalgamation of all ghost lights or what have you? So I do belong to a specific theater. Nice. Uh, you could say that they, in essence, manifest all of us by pouring energy into the particular lights that keep them safe 
when the rest of the lights are out. Mm. Uh, but we do travel. I can visit all of the other ghost lights at any theater as long as I am, well, uh, off, I suppose, would be the correct word. <laughs> My light is off and therefore I am off. And I can go wherever I want, but I have to be off. If I'm on, then I'm on. <laughs> oh, okay. So I I see. Uh, so when lit, like when you're off the clock, so to speak, um, off, then uh, you can go party and do whatever you want with your ghost light friends. Love that idea. Um, so the theater that you um, work at, I, I think I'm just going to say, um, the theater that you work at, um, uh, where, where pray tell is this uh, charming little establishment? So it's incredible. Uh, it, if I do say so myself, uh, my favorite theater that I've ever visited, but maybe I am biased, it's hard to say. Uh, we are in, we uh, are in Columbus, Ohio. It is a very little place, but they do have a thriving theater scene and they do very well for themselves, uh, or at least they try very hard. I have watched a number of very passionate auditions over the years and that means something quite a bit of something I would say <laughs> and I actually sort of float from theater to theater in Columbus making sure that they are all safe oh that's very sweet I love that um so <clears throat> so when you're on like uh, what is your your what are your duties what are your responsibilities because it seems to be your job so what what exactly is your purpose? Well, so there is the completely practical purpose, which is just making sure that nobody falls off the edge of the stage, which, as you can see from uh, news, if you heard, Ian McKellen just recently fell off the yes, edge of the stage. I it heard. is very important. It is tricky. He is, thank God, okay, because what would we do without him? Absolutely. Uh, a master of our time. So... Obviously, someone was slacking off in their responsibilities, although I don't know that they could have prevented that particular accident, but it is something that if the lights are off in a theater, you can't see the edge of a stage. Mm -hmm. There's just darkness. Yes. So there must be one light that remains at all times mm -hmm. so that nobody falls off the edge of the stage. But the things that people don't see, I suppose, are also important as well. Mm -hmm. And I do provide light so that the ghosts of the other theaters can come play in the mm. theater's time off. Uh, it's a lot of Shakespeare. I have seen Hamlet perhaps one too many times, mm. or enough at least, mm -hmm. but they deserve their time back on the stage as well. Mm -hmm. And so I cannot begrudge them if they want to do Hamlet well to death. Yes, well, and you know, if you ask me, I feel like Shakespeare has been done to death. To death, to death, even now. Um, however, I, I do I do feel that, you know, if, you know, if there's an actor out there who who's always wanted to play Hamlet, you know, or King Lear or what have you, um, you know, it, it makes sense that they would want to go to a theater and just go forth and do it. I mean, could you imagine the kind of cast lineups you could have with all the dead actors out there? Insane, if you ask me. Um, I like Alan Rickman. Oh, Alan Rickman. Anyway, um, yes. So, well, that's excellent. I love that you kind of, uh, you know, kind of support and, 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 uh, allow like the ghosts to come up and, and, uh, perform. And do they perform for other ghosts? Is that how this works? Sometimes they can. They're not very good at advertising, unfortunately. So typically speaking, no one knows when they're going to be there except for me. So typically it is just myself that's the audience. But I try very hard to be an incredibly supportive audience. You know, loud cheering, very loud laughing, oh, okay. any kind of energy. I do sometimes call some other ghost lights. Mm. Uh, there are some snobbier ghost lights. Like if you get together with the ghost lights in England, mm. well... Yes. You know, the ghost lights from the globe, they are the oldest and therefore uh, uh, yes. we have the most uh, refined taste, I will say. <laughs> so it's not great to invite them always to the Midwest, but they try, they care, they love the theater as well. So, Oh, that's wonderful. Uh, and uh, about the advertising, I feel like that's just kind of a problem for every theater, even for the living. 
Um, yeah. It seems these days it's hard, harder and harder to get the algorithms correct, you know? Um, and like shadow bans happening all the time and ugh, it's just a plain old mess. Um, I know that uh, there's uh, Ali's friends at a theater uh, are having trouble usually with uh, advertising shows because they're now considered spam. So, <laughs> no. oh, yes. And it is uh, very frustrating. Um, so, yes. So uh, having that tra <laughs> transcend over the veil with ghosts only makes sense to me. <laughs> quite difficult someone just told me about facebook the other day and if you try to introduce facebook to a spirit who has been dead since the 1800s it's nearly impossible they can't take pictures they can't do posts no one knows how to use a phone it's just atrocious i mean there's a whole generation of the living that can't get it either so true <laughs> you know <laughs> so um <clears throat> So what kind of theater uh, exactly, uh, like, what kind of stage are we working with? A, a proscenium or uh, what have you? We do. I typically, the theater that I reside in most often in Columbus does have a full proscenium arch. Uh, this is mostly because that is what requires the most watching is there is an edge to the stage. Mm -hmm. it's and fall off of. But I do sometimes spend my times in the littler theaters. Uh, the one that I love the most is quite old. Uh, well, quite for Columbus, I would say, which is not actually all that old when you think about it in the long run. <laughs> However, it is over 100 years old. And so you do make sure that you're keeping track of all of the corners. They've got a very ornate arch. It is gold. It is incredible. And there are seats so far up that it's it's funny they let the children sit there for some reason and oh. i don't know why because it is up in the balcony and it is right at the edge of the balcony it is so old that you could actually sit with your legs over the edge of the balcony oh my and goodness actual seating there it's inside it makes me worry for the children but the children seem to love it so wow. they continue to allow them to sit there so i do do a lot of watching of them uh it is simply incredible someone recently told them about the little boy ghost that lives in the basement and that mm. created a fuss for quite a few weeks oh, yeah. but he's he's relatively harmless and mm. they all keep to themselves that was a bit of a rant no you're Probably fine <laughs> So let's talk about your appearance for our uh, my guest, because this is a podcast. Nobody can actually see you. Um, so would you mind describing your visage to my uh, listeners? Well, technically, I would say that I am uh, generally in the nude, depending on how <laughs> you prefer to look at it. But I like to think that I am wearing a very sleek coat of black. Mm -hmm other than the light itself. And of course, the light itself is nude because the light needs to be unencumbered. It needs to be uninhibited so it can reach every corner of the stage. Mm -hmm. So there is no, uh, oh my goodness, what do you call them? Shade, lampshade. There we go. I, I got it. We got up with it. There's no lampshade. <laughs> Unless you're, you're three sheets, then there might be a lampshade. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> That's correct. Um, so other than that, though, it is I am uh, just a full, I would say, well, stick a rod, mm -hmm. as you would say, quite tall. Uh, I am taller than most of the shortest people, I would say, taller than the children, at least. <laughs> I don't know what is an average person. Some people seem to be quite tall, but I seem to be as tall as the most average person, I would okay. think. <laughs> I love this unit of measurement. Taller than the <laughs> shortest person. <laughs> no one and... taught me metrics. I tried to spend time in England and they just didn't teach. I just could not understand it. I'm stuck in the American way, but I also don't know what a foot is. So, <laughs> I mean, I, I, I think that um, Americans are just very stubborn, but I, I, I also, uh, it's hardwired when you're a child. <laughs> It's and true. so then units of measurement are just kind of these weird uh, uh, morphing sort of concepts in your brain. So, of course, Americans have to come up with different units of measurement. And uh, taller than the shortest person, I think, is one of my favorites so far. Um, 
<laughs> I'm glad you like. I mean, we have difficult we have difficult times with stage directions still in most cases. Oh, I want no. to go left when they mean to go right. We <laughs> typically are like your other left. No, that is the other other left. So who can measure even at this point? <laughs> yeah, too true, too true. Um <laughs> Well, let me ask you this. Have you seen anybody famous uh, coming through your doors? Like, have you been starstruck by anybody, living or dead, if if that serves? (laughs) Well, I mean, there have been more than a few of the dead who have come through who have been very impressive. But lately, as far as the live people go, Mm -hmm. um, one of the most impressive that I have seen, that I have actually met, uh, is Mike Feist, who obviously was in, oh gosh, that tennis, that tennis movie. I believe it was called Challengers. Yes. I know someone brings me posters in the theater, but he was a child on one of my stages. And even as a child, you could tell that he was incredibly committed. Oh. I have programs in the back offices with his name in them. And all of those programs say that he wishes to be on Broadway someday. And he did it. So we are quite proud. Oh. He went too far. Just incredible. Uh, I have met quite a few stage parents uh, who are, you know, just parents of people who have gone on. Josh Radner, who is in How I Met Your Mother. Oh, yes. I know his parents quite well. They visit quite a lot to yeah. the theaters in Columbus. Uh, ooh, who else? There's quite a few, I would say quite a few of the dead as well, but it's, oh gosh, it's hard to name them. I'm trying to see, now I'm trying to think of someone, Mm -hmm. but there's so many, unfortunately. Yes, I mean, there's so many, uh, and, but, you know, I just like three would do for me. That's good to put a cap on it because otherwise we would just think all day. Uh, Alan Rickman, of course, has come by. Also, Alan, how fantastic. (laughs) Who else is in theater? Here is the question. Richard Burton. Richard Burton. Oh, yes. Obviously, the original King Lear, Mm -hmm. although probably not actually the original. I don't know who the original was. They no longer pop up. They're quite dead. Once you are dead for a certain amount of time, I think then you just give up on the living. Yes, I think so too. I mean, I would if I could. There's quite (laughs) dead and then there's quite, quite dead. And I, the, there's those that I think just leave us. I did get a visit from Shakespeare once, although I don't think it was me. I think it was the theater that was absolutely butchering Macbeth. (gasps) Oh, oh, that's terrible. That's terrible. Yeah. Mm. Uh, Typically, I mean, I shouldn't have even said the word out loud. I was going to ask, are you one of those superstitious people that will not say the name of the Scottish play while they're in the theater? Well, not in the theater, not on stage. Mm -hmm. Not in the theater at the moment, so I feel like I should just repeat it a million times while I can. (laughs) Uh, I have watched, well, the children more than anyone because they haven't learned yet. People go through their remedies for when they say make that i'm gonna say it because i yes, can go for uh, it we're, we're not in a theater forward. uh so if you say macbeth in a theater the resolution to that have you ever done it yourself isn't uh, it turn three times and spit it is except if you have a very particularly mean director as i have watched come through columbus he also makes you leave the building run around the theater three times <laughs> go to the doorstep spin around three times and spit so it's quite an exercise i think he just likes watching the children run to be perfectly honest (laughs) well you gotta tuck them out so they're not talking between scenes you know true (laughs) you need to be tired in order for the performance to continue sometimes and they i think sometimes say it on purpose just so they can go for a jog yeah (laughs) but he's a very intimidating man he tried to quit smoking recently oh and while he's trying to quit smoking would only chew cinnamon sticks and therefore we are all triggered now by the smell of cinnamon. Oh, no. <laughs> it's no longer a holiday thing. It is something to fear. Oh, how exactly. terrible. <laughs> no shots of fireball. No, no, nothing no. fun. <laughs> oh, goodness, no. Let's, yeah, let's not add the whiskey to the quitting of the cigarettes. That seems like an awful combination. <laughs> uh, so we have Alan Rickman, Richard Burton. I did not forget. We need a third one. My goodness. I keep thinking of people who aren't dead. Uh, who is, that's the, that's the trouble. The ones that aren't dead are the ones that always frequently come to visit. It's the, I mean, you rarely catch a dead one, I suppose. I would say 
that there are quite a few who are famous in the area who you wouldn't necessarily know. Mm. Um, there is one in particular, I believe his name is Richard, who simply will not leave the stage. And you would not know him unless you were for, from Columbus, but he uh, commits the cardinal sin of touching other people's props. Oh, no. Very oh. Awful. It is. It's one the of the worst. The only thing that he could do that would be worse would to be to put on a costume and eat in it. <gasps> However, since he's non-corporeal, as he is in fact quite dead, the only thing that he can do is move props. And I think he's quite fussy that he's dead, and that's why he moves the props. Mm. I don't have any arms, as I am a single stick, so I cannot put the props back. But I do watch, I do try to chastise, because mm. it drives people absolutely crazy. You cannot move those props. Well, you know... Okay, so ghosts are real, obviously, and and that sort of thing, and I'm sure Richard is real. However, how much of this do you think <laughs> is people trying to cover their asses and then blaming a ghost? That's a fair question. Probably quite a bit of it, actually. <laughs> uh, I do sometimes wonder if Richard wasn't manifested by some of the people that work in the theater so that they would have someone to blame. I oh. mean... Gosh, an what, egg scapegoat egregore? Yes, exactly. Please. I love that. <laughs> what would be better? I mean, crumbs on your costume? Well, that wasn't me. I was not eating a donut in costume. Who would do such a thing? It's not my fault that costuming also, for some reason, brought in donuts when they brought my costume <laughs> to try on. Oh, what yes. Do? It was Richard. <laughs> oh, poor Richard. Uh, being blamed for everything. Um, I... Uh, I've only ever seen um, one ghost show. I do love a good ghost play. Although I, I kind of, I'm itching to go to another one. I heard about one um, happening in New York. Uh, and I think it is uh, Jack Lemon and uh, uh, who was the other one <laughs> that they always were together? My goodness. Mathow. I Oh, Walter? Walter Matthau, yes. Um, so the two of them are reprising the roles, uh, the odd couple. So they're putting that on in some little black box in New York. So I was thinking yeah. about going. Um, so maybe I'll see you there if you haven't heard. About, I mean, obviously, you didn't hear about it because they're terrible at advertising. I just heard oh, this yes. in passing. So, um, but yes, I think we should go. Um, I think that would be a lot of fun. And then you can Absolutely. introduce me to some of your ghost light friends. Yes. Some of them are incredible. You know, some of them are in cities where you wouldn't even believe that there is a theater, and they are so endearing. I mean, Aww. some of the cities that you go to in places like Idaho, no offense to Idaho, mm -mm. Uh, I believe there's beautiful scenery out there, but no one ever goes there for theater, and they are just itching to talk to people. Mm. I don't think they are quite socialized enough, if you ask me. They oh. could deal uh, a little more etiquette but uh, you know they're not going to eat popcorn in the theater so really what more etiquette do you need they're not opening hard candies oh yes there's nothing worse in my opinion than being in the in the middle of like a heartfelt soliloquy of someone on stage and then you hear behind you the tip t the tapping of hard candies falling down a bunch of of steps or uh or just the rapper um i actually went to a show recently and there was uh what was it oh it was company mm. and it was uh the final uh, like song uh and they had gender swapped it and so she was uh it was one of the heartfelt ones i can't remember the name of it however all I can't remember it because all I could focus on was the woman behind me. Literally. No. Oh. For two and a half minutes. No. That's Open all. the candy. Exactly. Pre -open I, your candies. I nearly snatched it from her mm. to open it for her. I mean, she was an elderly woman and I didn't want to be rude, but she was being rude, if you ask me. And... I, I nearly snatched it out of her hand. Um, but, uh, and it wasn't even good candy because I did feed on her later. And it just, it was one of those butterscotch things I'm not a fan of. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, no, she, uh, 
just ruined. And it was like a quieter song. And it was just so, it was, she might as well have just like opened it right next to my ear. It was. They so- always wait. They always wait for the absolute quietest moment. I do not understand it. Have you ever gone to England to see theater? I, back in the day uh, when I lived there, yes. But it was in um, the times of, you know, uh, Chaucer and that sort of thing. So That's true. Yeah. So I would say that this is probably a new trend then uh, and something that we genuinely don't see in America. Uh, I was lucky enough to catch a performance of The Normal Heart, which if you have never read is an absolutely devastating show, mm. um, especially when you come back from intermission and there is a culture in England of eating ice cream in the theater ice cream they go and buy little ice creams and they will sit in the front row and they will eat their ice creams with those little sticks which i do not understand uh i'm all for sticks i am very pro stick given that i am (laughs) half of one however i cannot imagine putting one into my mouth because it seems as though the texture would just be completely awful and they will sit there intermission and eat their ice cream off of their little sticks while they are watching the most devastating show you have ever seen in your life and i do not understand it we do not do this in america i do not think that it is a culture uh where we are trying to do better i simply just think that we have not brought ice cream into the theaters for some reason i don't i don't know enough about england to understand if the ice cream is cultural Uh, that is bizarre i've never heard of that um it's interesting like the little quirks of culture like that Yes. Um, because I can't, I can't imagine, you know, uh, you know, somebody uh, being on stage and and saying something so heartfelt, and all they hear is like the scraping of a wooden stick in a bowl to get that last oh. bit of cookies and cream ice cream. <laughs> Horrendous. Uh, we do have Skittles in America, which are arguably yes. worse. It's very true. I can't decide. I've never tasted a Skittle, but they look awful sugary yes they melt they stick to the seats they get in the seats do not understand where they're allowed it's basically flavored plastic um and and the hard shell on the outside makes them like marbles and then you can hear them cascading down theater steps uh at least once a show uh where i'm from how do you tell the difference between one of the sugar ones and one of the chocolate ones because they look the same to me uh uh, yeah, it's kind of a roulette, really. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> if if you have uh, the M and M's and the Skittles, uh, yes, they can be hard to decipher between. Um, and actually, I know people who do mix them and put them Fine. all in their mouth at the same time. <sighs> that sounds horrendous not that i've never i've never had a taste bud so i don't know oh, <laughs> i, I can't true. say that i can tell but it seems awful it does the only thing that that makes it make sense is that this person in that i'm talking about is a complete stoner so that's probably why <laughs> We don't let them into the theater enough, in fact, the stoners, I think. Mm-hmm. I feel as though they could be very inventive. Absolutely. We don't call to them, though, and we should. Yes. We should do quite... I have watched some productions lately, the immersive productions that are starting to crop up, just incredible. And I feel as though the stoners and the immersive productions could either be, well, terrible mm. or just incredible. Yes. And I feel as like though we should invite more of that. Potentially, maybe they sign waivers. Yes, that might that might work well. Um, I actually also, you know, because you know they have um, drunk Shakespeare, you know, where they take like five <laughs> shots and then they they perform Shakespeare uh, as best as they can. I think you know- having a weed <laughs> version, I think, would be great. <laughs> Oh, incredible. He and he loves those productions more than any other production. He will show up for them. Oh, Shakespeare. No, he is there, but he will stay there in the background. That is how he intended it to be performed. Is as loose and as drunk as possible. Yeah, Billy uh, is a fan of um, drunken buffoonery. Well, uh, my dear friend, um, I have immensely enjoyed our conversation uh, about your 
your job and theater in general and different quirks and my new favorite unit of measurement. Um, <laughs> but, but now we're going to move on to some paranormal gossip. For tonight's gossip, uh, I have heard that the dog man of Michigan um, has recently won a trophy. Uh, and a trophy for a lookalike contest. Um, apparently, in Michigan, uh, there's a Justin Timberlake lookalike contest that happens um, once a year. And I don't know why they do this. It's not like he's from Michigan, I don't think. Um, but, you know, maybe some InSync fan just wanted an excuse to look at a bunch of men who m look like Justin Timberlake. Well. Lo and behold, Dogman of Michigan won the lookalike contest. And when asked about how he prepared for this lookalike contest, he actually said, uh, I'm nothing because I didn't even enter. I was just walking by. So <laughs> that <laughs> is your paranormal gossip. Um, if you have a bit of gossip, a misconnection, or personal sad to share with the show, please email thevampiretalkshow at gmail.com or slide into my DMs on Twitter, Facebook, Insta, or TikTok. Uh, are you familiar with the dog man or Justin Timberlake? <laughs> vaguely. I would say I am vaguely familiar with all of the above. There was quite a period of time where the youths would only talk about Justin Timberlake, mm -hmm. uh, I believe the band in sync which i have never learned how to spell but uh it used to be quite popular but it was very very long ago mm -hmm. i would say uh and then he went into acting which uh, seems to have been a questionable choice on the whole um yes. so i've heard about him vaguely the wolf man i have never met myself but i do hear that he's quite polite if not a little bit hairy mm -hmm. Uh, you the dog man, you mean? You yes, said wolf so, man. <laughs> well, it's mistakeable. They're interchangeable, aren't they, wolf man? Although a wolf man seems much more mature than a dog man, I would say. Uh, yes. Which, in my experience, seems true. Mm -hmm. I mean, they look so distinguished with that gray. With the gray true. fur. It, it mm -hmm. matures them beautifully, uh, wolf man. Um, um, well, my friend, um, thank you so much for being on the show. Um, and I hope, uh, you can come with me to New York for that, uh, Lemon Mathau odd couple. I am there already, really. And if I just might say Macbeth a few more times while I'm allowed to say it and will not be kicked out of the theater, I'm just going to say, I'm going to say it one more time. I'm going to say Macbeth one more time and then it will be out of my system. <laughs> It won't. I'll have to come back sometime so I can say it 20 more times. It's Absolutely. Fine. Always welcome to come here and just shout Macbeth. Um, Thank you. Well, that's all for the show tonight, kitties. And remember, embrace the dark, the strange, and unusual. It just may embrace you back. Thanks to Emily Hoffman. You can follow them everywhere at Mothman Believes in You. And please participate in liminal.earth. Trust me, it is super fun. Please consider becoming a Patreon member of the show. You can be a Baby Bat Sticker Club member where you get stickers every month, or you can be a Tarot Speakeasy member where you can get a tarot reading and tarot card sent to you every month. Please subscribe on patreon.com slash the vampire talk show. This has been an Opus Knox Media production. To find out more, go to opusnoxmedia.com.